Good morning everybody and welcome to yet another Sunday morning show from another Lynx golf course. Last week down in Perranporth, this week we're just on the range here at Saunton Golf Club, back at Saunton. And the reason why we're back at Saunton is because there was a comment that came in from a video that I put out last week, which was, isn't it about time Dan played a little bit of golf with Joe the Pro again? He'd like to see Joe the Pro on the channel. So Joe the Pro actually jumped in and commented on that post and said, well, when Dan actually gets his uh, together, then maybe we'll actually, uh, we'll actually get a game. So I've actually called him and we've come up here to Saunton. We're on the West Course today. We're doing a break par series, but we've also been joined by the big guns. Hello. Welcome back to the Sunday Morning Show, Paul. Thanks, Dan. How are you doing? I'm very good. Interesting conversation we were having just a moment ago, which was about your club. You came over and, and gave me my a time back, because this is my old T100S set, which you've butchered because you've taken all the shafts out and put in your own kit. But what I've noticed with this is that you, that is like, I mean, I'm two degrees flat, mm -hmm. and that looked like it was very flat. Yeah. What is the theory with going flatter in your, well, higher lofted clubs? So I was always missing my more lofted clubs left. Okay. I think a lot of the tour pros flatten off their wedges as well because they don't want to see their wedges going left too much. Basically what I found using Trackman and other launch monitors was that the shorter the club for me, the more my swing path is going from in to out. Right. So, and that was that was causing me to hit sort of quite a bit of shape of right to left onto it. So just flattening them off has helped me straighten up my short irons. Okay. Um, I don't need to do it with the longer irons because they still they go pretty, go pretty straight, but they're certainly noticing the shorter irons are going missing left a lot. So. And actually, with a shorter iron, especially wedges, a lot of the tour players like to see it maybe just, just drop to the right. Mm -hmm. They like to be able to fade their shots in. They don't want to see the ball kind of turning over too much because when the ball lands, it shoots on. Yeah. But that is interesting. And then when you come to your longer clubs, actually, you want to try and get the most out of your longer clubs. Mm -hmm. So actually getting them turning over, getting a, maybe a little bit more, yeah. a little it's bit less spin. The, it's all to do with the D-plane and the way that the, your ball position slightly changes based on the, on the club that you're using. So it's something I've just sort of experimented with over time and just bent it until I got it to the right position where it was holding a straight line. Um, so it's not, it's, I haven't got too scientific with it, it's more trial and error and just bent, putting them in the vice, bending them until they get, until they get straight cool, shot. I bet you Joe the pro is just can't look at your club, no, he can he? He, he puts them down, he like, no. he almost faints every time he looks. You still definitely should have done a what's in the bag on your PGA Championship victory. Like not only were all the ferals hanging off, I've never heard a noise, all the, they were all rattling. Like I've never seen a bag of spanners like it. <laughs> you just leave my clubs alone, all right? <laughs> So something I want to talk about in today's Sunday morning show, and it's something that came up from the comments from last week, which was talking about green fees and how much golf has gone up from a price point of view, not necessarily from a membership point of view, but from a green fee point of view. And I just caught up with Andy Knight, who's the head pro here, and we were just talking to him about, you know, why, why the price is kind of what it is when you're looking at a golf course like Saunton, where they've got 36 holes, um, how many rounds of golf do they want coming through the golf club? And I think it's really interesting to see exactly how they figured it out for themselves here at the golf club. And I wanted to share that one with you today. But I do want you to comment down below, because I know some of you did, but I do want you to comment down below. Do you think the price of green fees has gone up and has it gone up too much? Higher launching, yeah. But it's not higher launching. They don't black, blue, red, you're white like, you're board. Like a club fitter as well. They don't you? launch. They don't launch any different. It's just a feel thing. It's softer in the tip, so, and it's softer in it, so it feels soft. I hate boardy feeling shaft. It doesn't launch any higher or spin any higher than blue or black. <laughs> I had enough of this guy. <laughs> 
Boys, boys, boys. <laughs> All right. He's literally, we're only on the sixth hole, he's been living rent free in your head. He moved like literally in. as we sat down in the clubhouse. Yeah, he moved in before we started. Squatted in, and there he is. Well, I hope you're enjoying your coffee as well this morning. So I didn't manage to get everything that I wanted to achieve for the Sunday morning show at Saunton because we teed off at two o'clock. We were rushing our tail to get a break pass series done. And actually, what's some of the subject of break pass series? What did you think of this week's break pass series at Perrinporth? The views, I've got to say, weren't fantastic. They were pretty good for part one, didn't really get that many views for part two. So I'd like to hear down there in the comments if you were somebody that didn't necessarily watch the course vlog that we put out this past week, and what was it that didn't inspire you to want to watch this week's course vlog? Because the comments that I get a lot is that people want to see more course vlogs. So we're going out trying to create more course vlogs in this dry weather, but we're not getting the views. So I'd like to hear down there in the comments. <laughs> So I've been thinking about these green fee prices for a, a little while now. I've given myself a good week to have a, a think about it, do a bit of research on it, look at what some of these golf clubs are actually charging. And yeah, you're going to get your premium golf courses that are going to be charging, you know, £500 for a round of golf. But you've also got the other end of the scale, which, um, for example, my brother Paul looks after a golf course um, just outside of Plymouth and you can play that golf course for around 15 pounds per round. So there is a huge movement when it comes to the level of green fee that you're gonna be looking at paying. But for the most part, anything between sort of 50 and 150 pounds is kind of where I'm seeing majority of golf clubs looking to sort of bench themselves. And I had a really good conversation with Andy Knight, head professional at Saunton, and I asked him, how do you decide what you're actually gonna charge people for a round of golf? And there's a number of things that they take into consideration when they're making the decision on what they're going to be charging for a green fee. Play Saunton in the winter time, you're talking around sort of 80, 90 pounds. If you're going to be playing in the summertime, you could be up to 145 pounds per round. And that's just going in and paying a green fee. There's obviously other offers available when you book through different people or you book packages or number of people that play. There's loads of options out there. Playing Churston, you're around sort of 40 to 60 pounds per round. Now, when I spoke to Andy, he said, Dan, you need to consider a few things. So number one, you've got to keep the members happy. So if you're putting out lots and lots of green fees, the members aren't going to be overly happy with that because the golf courses get busy. And the other thing that you've got to think about is Saunton were putting out around 11,000 rounds of golf of green fee payers. On top of that, you've got obviously your membership. Now, the golf courses have to cope with 11,000 rounds. I might not mean by that as in can they hold that amount of people. It's how much wear and tear are those 11,000 rounds doing to the golf course? And this is something you need to be thinking about when these golf courses make their decisions on what they're gonna be doing, because obviously the more wear and tear, the bigger costs there's gonna be for those golf clubs to be able to maintain those golf courses. The other thing that 11,000 rounds on top of your membership is gonna do is it's gonna bring you in more income when it comes to the bar and catering side of things. So that's something that a golf club needs to consider. And then the last thing that you need to consider is obviously you've got your golf pro shop, which is gonna be getting more and more footfall through that shop, therefore turning over more money, which includes more driving range tokens, which includes more buggy hire and trolley hire. So these are all little things that golf clubs have to take into consideration when they're making their prices. If they make them too cheap and load it up, then ultimately they're gonna do lots of wear and tear on the golf course, but the income they're gonna get off the back of it could be really good. So what Saunton have done is looked at other top 100 golf courses in the UK, looked at where their benchmark of prices are for a round of golf, and they've kind of got themselves in the mix there because both the east course and the west course are certainly inside that top 100 golf courses so that's where they've kind of got themselves into a position now where they've got their prices where they think they've got them which works for them they've also brought the footfall 
down fractionally from 11,000 down to around sort of eight to 9,000 rounds, which allows them to be able to manage their golf courses just a little bit easier and keeps the members happy. But the one snag that is something that he needs to consider is actually with that lack of footfall now coming through from those visitors, it does actually affect the income that comes in from the pro shop, which is now in-house for the club. So there's this massive balancing act that they've got to try and get absolutely spot on. And then you take Churston Golf Club, and I've now had the opportunity to spend some time with Matt, the general manager here, and I said to Matt, how do you determine what your prices are gonna be when it comes to green fees? Now, Churston brings in around 70% of its income from membership, not just their fees, but ultimately what they spend in the bar and catering area as well. So he's gotta find a further 30% to make up, obviously, that shortfall, that difference, that he's gonna need for his surplus at the end of the year. Big things that he's gotta consider as well is that it's just cost 90,000 pounds to replace a greens mower. Now the cost of mowers and all of that side of things has gone up huge amounts in the last sort of five years. Probably five years ago, you might be able to pick one up for around 60 grand. It's gone up like 30,000 pounds. So these are things that he has to consider when he's setting up his prices for his green fees. One thing that he does he looks around the general area, looks at the golf courses that are around us, and then he'll determine where his price point is gonna sit. He doesn't wanna put himself too high and not attract people, but he also doesn't wanna put himself too low where he attracts lots of people, and then ultimately we upset the members, but you also get a lot more wear and tear out on your golf course. But again, the kick on for that, for people to come and visit Churston Golf Club is that they're gonna spend a little bit more money in the pro shop with Harry, but they're also gonna spend a little bit more money behind the bar. So again, this massive juggling act. But like I said earlier, you can actually get rounds of golf on different golf courses for a lot less than what you're gonna be spending for a top resort or a top 100 golf course, certainly in the UK. And if you think about that, I mean, you take a car as an example. You know, I've just recently been up and done that Porsche experience up there in Silverstone, and the level of cars go up a huge amount. I mean, obviously from a Porsche point of view, they start off quite high if you're gonna buy a brand new car, and they go even higher if you wanna go for the top end car. But there is also availability in the second hand market that allows you to be able to purchase a car for a pretty reasonable price that's gonna fit within your budget. Yes, you're probably gonna have a few more miles on it, but there's a way in which we can look at the golf side of things as well, because there are golf courses out there, hidden gems out there that don't charge massive amounts of money and can still give you that amazing experience. However, those top end golf courses, those high profile golf courses, courses that have been ranked in those top 100s, the reality is they just cost a lot more because they want to create the service to give you guys. And that actually, well, ultimately that costs money. But I'll tell you what doesn't cost money. And that is spending time with your nearest and dearest when playing golf. And that's something that I'm going to be doing next week. I'm heading out to France to spend some time with Lester and with Lee and another very good friend of mine, Chris. We got a little golf tournament we're gonna to be playing in over in France. We're gonna be playing Valandre, St. Ca and Dinard. I'll pop a little link down below of all those three courses that we've already played for you to get a flavor of that. But that's where we'll be bringing next week's Sunday morning show. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you're not put off by the fact that golf is getting a little bit expensive. However, I think there's ways around it. You might not be able to hit that top golf course right now, but I'm sure one day we'll all get there. Don't forget, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you again all the way from France. Thanks for watching.